Topo Athletic is committed to lifelong health and better movement. Topo builds running shoes for those who get out there every day regardless of weather, speed, energy, or mood. Their distinctive fit and feel combines instinctive human movement with modern performance and lightweight comfort to help you keep going, keep trying, and keep moving. Discover the Topo difference and step into a run experience unlike any other. I was just going to say it wouldn't be a fireside chat if it wasn't for like a few technical issues. Uh, we had a guest that came on a couple weeks ago and it took her 10 minutes to get on because there was a storm in Tahoe. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Yeah, no. I mean, I can't guarantee that I will have no tech issues this entire time, but we made it here. <laughs> We made it this far and that's all that matters. Stevie, how are you doing? It's so great to have you back on the show. Yeah, I'm so excited to be back. Um, I'm doing well, happy to be here. Um, excited to chat, always have so much fun with you guys. Yeah, it's, um, it's crazy. You were actually like the third episode of our fireside chat, which is insane. You've seen the whole journey and you were, you've been a friend of Run Try Bike since like long before that, like long yeah. before even I came on the business, which is, which is wild. Like you've been long for pretty much the whole journey, which is super cool. So it's great having you back on the show. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to uh, be able to be a part of a small business journey doing great things. I feel like I'm lucky to have that experience personally and professionally with a few um, other small businesses that are doing a lot of great things for athletes. So excited to be here. Yeah. And, you know, I saw your story today about like coming back from like a trip or something and like digging yourself out and i'm like that's me after every race this season just dig myself out all the emails all the stuff like where do you even start you know right it was like basically you know it's something as a business owner that i've i haven't mastered but i've definitely learned to do is learning how to step away like fully step away and give myself that time away and then just figure it out when I come back. Though it is always like still a little bit weird to me. Last week I was like, basically I'm just pretending I don't have a business this week. <laughs> like it just shuts down. Um, but you know, it's 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 good to come back. There's lots of fun things upcoming, this included, that have been on my plate this week. It's just like, oh wow, there's lots of things. I gotta figure this all out. <laughs> it's. it's it's always the same for us too. Like Jason and I were talking about taking like one full day off every week from the business and not even thinking about the business. And I just think that's so important, not just for business, but like even sports and just like life in general, like activities in general. Yeah, for sure. Giving yourself that, that break and that nice ability to kind of reset your brain avoid some burnout that we'll see in athletes and business owners or really anyone who is putting a lot of passion into one or two areas of their lives so yes it's been a skill um over the past couple of years i've learned how to actually sit on the couch and watch tv um so yes it's been a journey for me too <laughs> yeah still working on that i've only been in this entrepreneurship a year so still learning from everyone still figuring it out. I really do think we need like an emotional support group for small business owners. We really do. I know Jason and I talk about this all the time. We really should get it started. <laughs> but yeah, before we jump into the icebreaker questions, I wanted you to talk a little bit about who Stevie is. And just to quote one of your reels and to quote Jay-Z, I want to allow you to reintroduce yourself. Oh, well, thank you. Appreciate that. So I'm Stevie. I'm a registered dietitian, board certified in sports nutrition. I am also very importantly a dog mom uh, to Chance, who hopefully may make a difference. <laughs> I'm looking at him sleeping very cozy here um, af after 8 p.m. on the East Coast. It's usually around our bedtime. Um, but I am, of course, a small business owner. I work with athletes and active individuals. Um, basically, I'm very passionate about a health first approach to making sustainable choices that really support you as an individual and how you can show up to be the best version of yourself so you can keep doing the things you love forever. Um, you know, taking taking that approach where we're working a lot on our mindset, how we think about ourselves, 
how we talk to ourselves, how we speak about food, how we kind of learn how to ebb and flow with, I was on vacation last week and went to Taylor Swift and flew across the country and I was off my routine and it's not about being perfect. It's about how can I show up for me so I can stay healthy, keep doing what I love, but also enjoy all of life's moments. And that's what I like to translate to my clients um, when we're thinking about nutrition and sports nutrition. Yes, of course, I do the very technical stuff with race fueling and carb loading. And, you know, to me, that's all important, but it's also very almost superficial. Like it's easy for me to tell you how many grams of carbs you should be having in your carb load or per hour of races and, and running. And a lot of dietitians do that and there's nothing wrong with that. But I prefer to approach um, some of my nutrition relationships with my clients to take it further than that surface level. Yes, we learn those tools, but we also really learn how to adapt and overcome the challenges because whether you have kids, have family members you're taking care of, work full-time, work part-time. We all know things are going to go awry. Things are yeah. not going to go to plan. So it's learning how to make those decisions to support yourself on the fly. So that's really what I pride myself in um, work-wise and personal-wise as an athlete. Um, I'm a retired Ironman athlete. Uh, I've done 10 full Ironmans, and it was in a seven-year span. Um, so that I mean, if you've done an Ironman, you know that's why I'm retired, because that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still swim and run, biking not so much. Um, but I've done ultra marathons, lots of marathons, 10 kilometer open water swim. So basically more of your endurance junkie um, when it comes to sports. But grew up playing team sports, was a lacrosse goalie, all of that. So. We're just covering all the bases over here. <laughs> we're covering all the bases, uh, which we're going to take a step back and go into an icebreaker question. All right, let's uh, do it. This is nothing related to the rapid fire because I believe as an East Coaster from Buffalo, I know your answer to pineapple on pizza. Oh, oh I'm, pine I'm team pineapple. Are you? Re oh, yeah. Okay, I remember because I remember Jason being totally in utter shock. He was like, how can you be from Buffalo and one pineapple on your pizza? I broke the mold on that question because I'm bougie and I like pineapple and prosciutto and a little bit of barbecue sauce. Oh, wow. I love, love that a lot. And it's a great combo. You're welcome. I love that a lot. And I do not think Jason will. <laughs> no, he's going to be very disappointed. He's not going to be mad. He's going to be disappointed. Yeah. Too bad he's not here. Too bad he's taking the week off. Um, okay. All right, so my question for you uh, for Icebreaker is I got a couple of them. Uh, best potato dish, because we know potato is a vegetable that never misses. Uh, what's your favorite way to have potatoes? Sweet potato fries. Ooh, I like that one. I love sweet potato fries. Honey butter, dip them. Ooh, yeah, ranch for me. See, that's where the buffalo girl comes in. We don't do ranch, we do blue cheese. <laughs> I do love blue cheese. Uh, I can agree. With that. Yeah. As far as my lactose intolerance will take me. <laughs> cannonball into the pool or dip your toe? Oh, cannonball. I love, love that we're two for two on the answers for people wanting to cannonball so far. I, I love this question and it's got to go in the regular fireside chat. 100%. So. The next question I have for you, like we're gonna dive into some of the stuff you put in your posts, which I love your posts. They're like great reminders for me. I was doing a 20 mile long run to finish out like my last like long effort before Oregon 209 days. Um, and I was like a half an hour from finishing my run. And I looked at my last like cliff, um, it wasn't cliff shoes, power bar shoes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was thinking back to that post that you made about there's just two miles left there's only like a half an hour left and it was very common for me in the past to go well there's only an hour left you know i can grind this out and mm -hmm. instead i ate the chews because i thought about your post from a race that you did where the race photographer caught you like 90 percent done there's two miles left so just talk about like being consistent with your nutrition 
from start to finish of a race? Because a lot of people, I think, fall into that trap. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those things, again, this is honestly more of a mindset thing, right? And looking like, okay, well, it's just two miles. So I probably don't need it. And most people, I, I, I don't want to say everybody, because I don't like to group, you know, group everybody. But a lot of people are like, come at it from the viewpoint of, oh, this can save me some calories I don't need to eat. I don't like using the word calories. I tend to not use that in practice because I feel like it has a very negative connotation to it. Thanks to diet culture, I prefer to think of it as energy, right? I say energy instead. So a lot of people do it and it might even be subconsciously as a way of re restricting, right? Whereas if we reframe that and we're looking and thinking about, okay, this fuel, this sports nutrition is here to help me. It's energy to help me not only get through these last two miles, but also start that recovery process after our workout, like before we even finish the race or the long run. Um, also, there's nothing worse than like bonking in the last two miles of any run, whether it's a race or a training run. It's like a walk of shame. And then you'll just be there kill kicking yourself being like, I should have had that gel. And then also like at the end of the day, like one gel, it's like maybe a hundred calories there i am using the, the word i don't like and if you're like freaking out about a hundred calories then like maybe running isn't isn't it for you right like for me it's kind of like you gotta pay to play and if you want to play you gotta fuel otherwise you're just going to be doing harm to your body it's disrespectful right coming from that place of treating our bodies with respect and like we care about it um to me that is low-hanging fruit to help also meet those higher energy needs that us as athletes and very active individuals have like it's a super easy way and then you know say you're on that 20 mile run for your 200 mile race granted your 200 mile race is a little bit different than a marathon but you know there is the aspect of you're training your gut the more your body gets used to taking those gels or chews or sports drink on a schedule, the better tolerated it's going to be, right? Mm -hmm. On race day when you're going at intensity. So to me, it's only we're seeing that last, you know, that gel and the last two miles is an opportunity to finish stronger, to feel better after you finish. Cause then there's nothing worse than finishing your long run on a Saturday. And then you're so white that you can't do anything. You want to show up at, for the rest of your, like we get two days off a week. <laughs> you don't want to have to nap. If you choose to nap, great, but you don't want to be so white that you can't hang out with your friends or spend time with your kids. Right? So it's looking at that bigger picture. Yeah. I have to agree with that. And I, by the way, I have to say, I love the description of energy instead of calories. Like it's energy. I almost see it as like a power up in a video game mm -hmm. or something, you know, mm -hmm. like the idea of like using fuel as not calories, but as like energy for like what you're doing mm -hmm. just resonates with me so much as somebody who used to like fall into that trap of like calories and running as a method of weight loss as opposed to like fueling for performance yep yeah so. and i mean it's an easy trap to fall into no shame to anyone i think a lot of people don't even realize it yeah yeah definitely agree with that so you were you mentioned diet culture a little bit while we were talking so i wanted to dive right into it i saw your reel about girl dinner because i'd seen those posts all around and i could not stop laughing because i'm like i can't believe this is a thing you know but it is and so talk about the girl dinner trend and just the state of like diet culture especially on like social media and what we see yeah yeah i mean so i think i lost a lot of friends from this reel <laughs> but you know i just had to tell it like it is um because again it just goes back to what you just said like you fell into that trap and people who use Exercise and food is a transactional relationship. Again, like a lot of people, like, again, it, and it may sound like I might be, I'm a little bit of tough love, 
but I'm not judgmental because I, again, being in the endurance, I've been in the endurance sports world. I did my first Ironman when I was 20, 22. So I was really young and impressionable in my first marathon when I was 19. So I've been in that space. I've been a dietitian for 11 years. I've seen it all. And you know, I'm really always just speaking from what I see as the expert. A lot of people sometimes when I post things like that on social media might get a little bit defensive because I did one on 75 hard too. And people were getting up in arms and I was like, okay, well look, also I'm an expert. So I don't know. I don't, I don't have to prove myself to you. And this is what I see. And I work with a lot of people who have disordered eating behaviors and eat past history of eating disorders. So like it's, it's the hard truth. But anyways, back to girl dinner, I can see like, basically this became like a TikTok trend. Side note, I don't TikTok because I don't need to get lost in any other things. So if there's a TikTok you think I need to see, just send me the link and then I'll watch it. But I can't get lost scrolling in another app. But basically, it's girls that are glorifying disordered eating. It's disordered eating. It's basically girls taking pictures of like three grapes, a piece of turkey, and like a cube of cheese and saying girl dinner. Or like um, a high noon and a pickle and saying this is girl dinner. And they, they think it's cute because that how it has been portrayed on TikTok as this whole cute trend like oh my god girl dinner but all that really is 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 further glorifying diet culture and I've seen people who are in the fitness space doing this and I was like people look up to you in the in the fitness space and now you're just it's basically showing them that this behavior is okay because oh look this person can run fast or lift weights heavy and this is what they're having for dinner and this is not providing this is not treating your body with respect again this is not to say that we can't enjoy some alcoholic beverages if you make that choice for yourself or we can't enjoy like fast food dinner when we're traveling or like certain things that we know we shouldn't have all the time in a balanced diet right this is not to say we have to be perfect but glorifying this and calling it girl dinner also diminishes the message that myself and a lot of other really great sports dietitians are trying to put out there being like, no, like, especially for females, we need to eat a lot more than we've been told we need to eat. We need more energy for our body to continue to function optimally. And, you know, we're in this space where, especially women, but also men for so long, have just been told to just exist and, and think certain things are normal, like not having energy or having to sleep after all of your long runs or for female athletes losing your period or maybe not going to the bathroom regularly. And like these types of behaviors just continue to perpetuate that image that like this is okay and this is normal and it's not. And I just want to yell into the void and i thought that audio for the real was perfect too <laughs> yeah so perfect i i just i could not stop laughing because i was like this is true and i'm glad somebody's stepping up and saying right like you need i was talking to myrna i don't know if myrna's ever been on on here but she should be sure. but i was like we need you need you're a whole ass woman you need to eat a whole ass meal <laughs> especially if you're working out <laughs> I love that so much. And I just, I love like me after a long run, like I'm definitely all about like a good veggie burrito and like uh, a Horitos, a Pina Horitos. That's like, that's my go-to. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, it, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with those things. And it's just like, oh, why are you posting this? Like if you make these choices on your own, like that's one thing, but now you're like giving all this hype about it and everybody thinks it's cute. It's cute. I don't want to be girl anything. You know what I mean? It's just like the girl boss thing. Like, no, I'm, I'm just a boss, you know, it's like the boss, <laughs> <laughs> which is true. You are a boss. Thanks. <laughs> so, uh, going from that, uh, well, before we pivot into the next question, uh, one of the things that we saw on like one of the posts you made, it was one of our round tables. Somebody posted that they fell in love with you as a dietitian when you 
talked about what her post-workout meal was. I think it was like a cheeseburger or something. Oh, yeah. I do love a good cheeseburger after a workout. Oh, that's good. So good. That sounds so good. Like a good burger and fries with like good dipping sauces, which in your case, blue cheese, my case, ranch. Yeah, or, or or barbecue sauce on my burgers too. Ooh, that sounds so good right now. <laughs> With sauteed mushrooms and onions. Ooh. Bacon, yeah. This should yeah. just be a whole segment in <laughs> the fireside chats, just favorite workout meals or favorite meals. Or that's... favorite food. I know, that's why I tell people I became a dietitian because I love food. <laughs> I run because I love food. <laughs> No, I run. No, that's the old way of thinking. Right? Yeah. I was going to call you out on it, but yeah. I was like, let's see if he gets there. Appreciate that, that you were going to call me out on it. And then I was like, wait a minute. I got I it. Like, I'll give him a half second. <laughs> I love food just because I love food. There you go. Food is awesome. I'd be having what I have regardless of what I'm doing. Right? See? Yeah. We love it. Yep. That's, a, that's growth right there. Those are growth moments. <laughs> High five. High five. Um, or in this case, it says wave, but <laughs> same thing. Um, so now I wanted to get into the topic of burnout because Jason just put out an article about burning out from your passion. A lot of people seem to feel shame from like having a hobby, being passionate about it and burning it. We just put out a whole newsletter on it because it's something that people really resonate with. Mm -hmm. And Iron Man's in seven years, which is not easy iron man full iron man training folks is not easy and you raced 10 of them in seven years and you struggled with burnout so talk about what you would say now what do you might even say to your past self and what do you might say to people who are struggling with burnout um i'll start with what i would say to my past self and i would be like homegirl what are you doing i always say slow down <laughs> Like you, like, you don't need to do all the things. Like, there's lots of time to do the things, you know? Um, and I can say a lot of it is that I just got so excited. Like, I would finish an Ironman, and I would be like, I know I can do better. I know I can do better. And um, <clears throat> I feel like that's one thing with running and triathlon that some people struggle with is that they compare themselves, and they're trying to constantly chase another person or a Kona slot or whatever. For me, it was always like, I know I can do a little bit better. I know I can do a little bit better. And I just always just wanted to take that next opportunity to see what I could do. Um, so that being said, I would still tell myself to slow down because it was too much. But you'll live, you'll learn. I don't regret any of it. Um, it is what it is. I, but I always wonder like how things could have been different. I don't know um, if I would have wanted to, just, I don't think I would be racing Iron Man right now anyways. Um, because just having a business is, is has like taken so much time and love and passion and energy that I still don't think I would, I would be doing it right now. Um, but I wish, you know, I don't like to say that I wish I could go back and change things because I think that's doing past me a disservice, but I would definitely tell myself to slow down, do less, learn how to rest more, um, and that, like, learn how to say no to things. Not just races, but also social things and travel and commitment. Um, there was definitely a lot of fear of, fear of uh, missing out when I needed more joy of missing out um, at that point in my life. Jomo. But... Jomo. I needed some Jomo, but all I had was FOMO. Um, but now I've, I've really learned where I need to set boundaries, um, both in work and, and my extracurriculars and my travel and kind of know, have slowed down enough to listen. And this is something that I work with my nutrition clients with, is like listening to the feedback that our body is giving us because our body is constantly giving us feedback. Most of us are just trained to ignore it or push through it and fight through it. And a lot of that, a lot of the time, that's where we end up 
with issues. Um, so listening to my body's feedback and knowing when to sl slow the frick down, take some extra rest and say no. Um, those have been the biggest things. Um, and for those who might be experiencing burnout right now, um, I would say the big biggest thing is just like getting to that acceptance space because I feel like at least in my uh, situation and a lot of athletes I've worked with who are burnt out, like once they get to accepting that they're actually burnt out, the process then becomes easier for them um, in finding different things and learning to listen to their bodies, learning how to respect their bodies because overdoing it, not, you know, under fueling or overtraining, you know, that is to me, in my opinion, is, is disrespect to your body. Um, and they, you know, I'm not saying it's easy, but kind of the process I went through is like, okay, I'm going to do what makes me happy. Like what actually sparks joy? Because we don't, a lot of us don't get paid or have sponsors to, uh, run or swim or bike or do all these races. So like at the end of the day, if you're literally complaining about every single workout, you don't have to train for that race, right? It's a choice. So um, I think that's, again, that's a little bit further down the burnout train. Um, once you kind of regroup, you probably need to refuel yourself rest a little bit more. But then kind of once you're kind of got your bearings, it's okay what's going to make me happy and kind of getting out of that, 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 uh, very rigid mindset. I see a lot of endurance athletes in. Yeah. That's something I've struggled with. It's something Jason struggled with. I, I came in the onset of like my second year in ultra running and worked my way to basically 300 mile finishes in a year. Cause it was just this whole, like, which I'm not saying is inherently bad, depending on who you are and it's relative, but there was like this whole, like I keep needing to like up the ante, up the ante. I just keep needing to do the next big thing, 100 miles, 200 miles, 300 miles. And this year, I really took a step back and worked my way up into distances and competition mm -hmm. and really got my things in order. And just, it's just, it's definitely, I think a trap that a lot of people fall into in sports in general, just, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's a huge one. And it's just like, it's just like all of these things. Like, if you don't qualify for Boston, you're still a mar If you if you run a, a 26.2 mile race with a bib on, you're still a marathoner. It doesn't make you any less, right? If you don't do 10 Ironmans, it doesn't make you any less. If you're happiest doing sprint triathlons, and that is the training and time that fits in. Maybe you have a family, maybe you have a lot of commitments and that's what is realistic for your schedule. That's amazing if it makes you happy. Like there's so much pressure that you have to run a marathon every year or you have to do this or you have to do that because people are posting it on social media or it, it just drives me crazy because like, ah, it's okay to have goals and wanna push yourself and PR and all of that. Like love it but like at the end of the day like is it worth your peace is it worth this chronic stress that i see people put themselves in just trying to do all of the things and it's like you can still be healthy and enjoy swim bike run during sprint triathlons see me i always did iron man because i hate redlining no thank you i don't want anything to do with my threshold heart rate ever still unsubscribe return to sender like let me just plug and chug in my aerobic heart rate forever. Dude, but some of the no kidding. No kidding. I just did a time trial for my mile <laughs> on Saturday because it was on my schedule and I was just, I was dying. I'm like, I would rather go out and do another 100 mile race than do another mile time trial. Oh, yeah. 100%. But like, that's something. And I know some of this is learning. Like, you're going to learn this about yourself as an athlete. But it's just like, that's part of partially like my genetic predisposition right and we're just i love to chill in my aerobic zone but it's also it's one of those things where it's just like meeting yourself where you're at rather than trying to force yourself to be something that you think you should be because everybody else is doing it and it's just kind of like you know on the nutrition side of things i'm constantly trying to remind people that like 
Your, your worth is not tied to your weight. Your worth is not tied to what your body composition is. Like, I want you to focus on how you can wake up and feel good. I have people send me messages and they're like, wow, my appetite hasn't been crazy. I haven't had cravings. I'm not eating out of control. I'm sleeping great, but I haven't lost any weight yet. And my Garmin tells me I'm burning 3000 calories and I'm taking all these steps and I don't know why I haven't lost weight yet. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> go reread the first part of that sentence. Also, it's been a month. <laughs> And I, and it's again, it is not anyone's fault because this is what we're conditioned to think and feel about ourselves is that like, we have to be super thin and fit to be a good athlete or to be healthy. I know plenty thin and fit people that are not healthy. Like how we look on the outside doesn't necessarily reflect our health on the inside. So it's just, you know, I feel like I just gotta keep screaming these things into the void if, if they stick for a few people then yeah. we're doing let me, the let good me, work the biggest thing that i did this year that i'm really proud of doing is i threw away my scale i'm so proud of you no more, more scale i don't check my weight anymore and that was a huge step for me as somebody who used to be 250 pounds and check the scale every single day yeah it's because it, it's it, like I said, it doesn't make you any less you, no matter what it says, right? You're so much more of a person. We're all so much more of a person than that number on the scale. Agreed. So before we jump into the rapid fire, I wanted to get into uh, the topic of RA and osteopenia. Mm -hmm. If that if I'm pronouncing that right, I'm probably butchering all the names with everything. Osteopenia. Osteo there you go. Yeah. And is it rheumatoid arthritis? Rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Yep. I got, I'm, I'm one for two. I'll take that. Uh, so talk about, you made a post about that a while back. That really resonated with me. And I think a lot of people um, about the importance of health over an athlete's look and performance and the things that you've learned while being on this like new journey, because you had your diagnosis shortly before your 30th birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, wow. It, it was a journey and going back to kind of like that burnout and what I would tell my younger self, um, this is a big reason why I would tell myself to slow the freak down <laughs> because basically I was just doing too much. Um, and so when it comes to rheumatoid arthritis, it's an autoimmune disease. Um, it's usually, it has a very strong genetic tie to it. I don't know of any family member of mine who's actually been diagnosed, um, but typically it will present um, with an illness or an infection, or if the body is just like in a high straight state of stress, where I was when I was diagnosed. Um, of course, they tested for literally every type of infection possible to make sure there was no infection that caused it. Um, but it turned out it was, you know, basically my doing of many years of stress, um, racing 10 Ironmans. I did race two of the Ironmans after my diagnosis because I was already registered. Um, stubbornness prevails. Again, I would probably go back and tell my younger self, maybe not do that. But, you know, it's already said and done. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like one of those things that you don't expect to happen. And well, of course, it's not like a terminal illness, right? I'm not trying to be toxic positivity here. Um, still very much uh, life changing. I can say that my identity as an athlete has changed. And it was a, a process to kind of grieve the athlete I was. Um, and think of the athlete who I am now. Um, it's, it's definitely gotten easier. I can't, everyone's like, but you're still running and swimming and you can still bike. And I'm like, yes, but like, it doesn't feel the same. Like I can't like hit a tempo workout like I used to. I can't run nearly as fast as I know I would be capable of prior to this diagnosis. Um, that being said, is it impossible? Maybe not. Maybe I can. Like, I've always wanted to qualify for Boston. 
but I don't know if my body has the durability to be able to do that. Maybe when I get really old, <laughs> when my qualifying time is slower. Um, so there's some of that and it's okay to have that, that grief. And I think that's also important if people are going through a different season or a lot of changes in their life to take the time and kind of grieve that that person that they used to be or maybe the person that they aren't now and i i um have a lot of friends who have kids and whatever and i know a lot of this is a big thing with um during pregnancy and postpartum right like kind of grieving who they were before and it's okay because we're all so supposed to change and meant to change and you know my health diagnosis is just one of those changes and kind of like i said earlier a lot of what endurance sports is is adapt and overcome so how can i adapt and overcome um rheumatoid arthritis there's no cure for it it's a disease i'll have forever basically we're just working to manage it um, manage my symptoms um, for those who aren't familiar basically my immune system is attacking my joints so it sees my joints as like a, an invader and incites an immune response. Um, so joint deformities are something that I could be facing um, in the near future, as well as issues with ligaments and tendons that I've kind of already been dealing with. Uh, for me, most of it's in my hands, which is like great for a runner. And so I'm like, all right, my feet and knees still work. We can still do it. <laughs> my hands just gotta hang out right um so basically the medications that i've been on a slew of medications because um any autoimmune disease is very unique to each individual what's gonna work for me might not work for him with if he had the same disease so it's been a slew of failing medications <laughs> as insurance calls it um, and trying to control and basically slow the progression of the disease, um, as well as manage my pain. Um, and it's one of those interesting conditions where moving is very good for it. Exercise and staying active is important for the joints, but also not too much. It's kind of finding that balance of, okay, where wh where is this creating too much stress? Because as much as we all love running, swimming, and biking, it is a form of stress on our body, which isn't all bad, but if there's too much, or if we're not, we don't have our nutrition dialed, or other hydration, et cetera, recover, sleep, right? If we don't have that proper recovery, it's gonna push it towards that negative end. So a lot of my journey is like, finding that sweet spot of like, okay, what's too much? What's enough? How do I balance this? oh no, am I going to go into a flare up? What did I do? <laughs> so that's been a very, very um, kind of drawn out journey, a learning experience. Um, that being said, I mean, obviously I don't like having this disease, but it has been um, a very good way to force me to slow down and uh, practice what I preach about respecting my body and giving it you know what it deserves and needs yeah i i love that it comes right back to like respecting your body which is i feel like has been a common theme in this conversation and mm -hmm. it's crazy how we've been groomed to like not think of it that way of just like i think there are a lot of people who get into these sports who come from like other lifestyles and like feel like they have to like beat themselves up versus like having the mindset of, hey, if you treat your body well, it'll give back to you. Exactly. And again, nobody's fault. Like this is, even if it wasn't in athletics, right? Like what is, what is work life, right? It's always like more and more and more. Answer right away. You didn't answer that email fast enough. Answer Slack right away. It's, we're in, we have a lot of demands placed on all of us and we feel like we have this expectation, or at least I do, um, that we have to answer yep. and we have to do yeah, all the things all the time. And if you're not doing this, you're not doing enough, right? That's something I've worked on is, you know, is just trying not to feel like I have to prove myself, prove my worth, right? I, all, I know I talked about that in the context of clients and people trying to prove their worth of running, whatever. Same, I've been on a long journey of, 
trying to find that balance of like, I don't have to prove my worth to anyone because I am worthy no matter what, whether I'm racing Ironman or I have a bad year in business, like I'm still worthy, like I'm still great. So I've been on that journey myself. So <laughs> I'll always throw myself under the bus in these, in these situations too. <laughs> I've definitely been on that journey myself. Uh, even I have these conversations with Jason all the time, but just like we both have those like 12 a.m. wake up like, have I done enough for the business? Like all the time. And it's good to, it's always good to know that other people are dealing with it. Not that I want other people to deal with it, but I'm not know. Oh, yeah. I'm always thinking about like, man, I didn't post on Instagram. Like, <laughs> I, I should be doing this. Oh my God, did I do enough of that? It's like the constant in your head. I'm like, oh my God, that email. Did I answer that email? <laughs> Man, this could be a whole nother conversation in itself. Maybe we'll have to have you back on the chat a third time. Or no, we will have to have you back on the chat a third time. Oh yeah. There's got to get... be a three call. It has to be a trilogy. Um, but before we jump into the rapid fire section, let the people know where they can find you and if they want to work with you, how can they do that? Yeah. So you guys can always find me over on my Instagram. Of course, you see it here. But Stevie Lindland. Um, Chance is sleeping. So he's not going to make an appearance tonight. Management is tired from managing today. But he is always lurking on my Instagram. So you can find me there. Um, my website and Teachable School are all linked um, in my bio. But in my teachable school, I have a lot of programs. I have master classes, which are just like one hour classes where you can learn about how to come back from injury. I have a good one on thyroid health, um, a mindset class in there. So you can check those out. I've got a couple programs. I've got a membership where you can, if you think you like me keeping it real, it's the Keep It Real Collaborative. Um, there's a good group in there. We have a private Slack channel. It's basically you can ask anything nutrition, running, sport related in there um, and have a good group community support. Um, you can apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can always apply for that. And I've got a new off-season nutrition program coming out in the next few weeks. So basically, if you stay tuned to my Instagram and head to the link in my bio, you can catch up on all of the things there. And chance. And chance, yeah. I, I would say I would follow you and I would unfollow and follow you and keep following you just for the chance content alone. Like, it makes my day to see those stories where chance will just walk up to you drop the toy and give you like the side eye of like your day's over it's it's time to go for a walk all day today he was doing that tonight he was like mom what's going on i need my bedtime treaties he said yeah that's that's the most important thing got to take care of that right <laughs> so now we're gonna jump into the fire segment this is gonna be totally different from the one we had the first time around uh, and it's gonna be just a bunch of questions all over the place are you ready fire? let's go let's do it so so question number one how long would you last in a zombie apocalypse oh two hours <laughs> I, I got I got no I got no skills <laughs> for the apocalypse I'm not is, ready is, I'm not ready I, I, I love the honesty. I think I would be somewhere in the middle of you and the last person who came on the show said that I would, I would survive or something like that. No. No. Uh, we're not ready for that. There's a whole rabbit hole you can go down to what kind of zombies and stuff, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> uh, and we talked about favorite post-race meal, cheeseburgers. Cheeseburger, yep. Uh, uh, Go-to karaoke song. Oh, Whitney Houston, I want to dance with somebody. Oh, I love it. I love it. Everybody's, I joke about this all the time, but everybody's got that one song that they have to just impress everybody else. Oh, yeah. Like, that's like the two or three out of the blue, like rap songs that I know, like a Wu-Tang song or something like that. Like, <laughs> I know you had to tell. <laughs> um, sleep in or nap? Sleep, sleep in. Sourdough or wheat? Uh, neither. I'm a gluten-free girly. Oh, oh, okay. I like that. <laughs> that would be an answer. Um, 
that should be one of the choices. Um, stale Sour Patch Kids or Fresh Circus Peanuts? Fresh Circus Whoa. Peanuts. Whoa. <laughs> I, I don't want extra chewy Sour Patch Kids. No, thank you. See, or extra. I actually, I actually respect that response because Jason was like, why would anyone choose Circus Peanuts over any kind of Sour Patch Kids? And we just got a response. Proven that. No, it and I are going to get a huge fight after he watches this. <laughs> Um, crunchy or creamy peanut butter? Creamy. Ah, okay. okay. I'm I'm team Jason and I are team crunchy, but Lori, where that like the crunchy peanut butter will destroy the bread. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I will agree to disagree, but yeah. Uh, uh what sound does a seal make? A seal. <laughs> seal all i think is chance in his seal face and he does a seal cry he does a seal cry mm -hmm. are you gonna make me do it i'm gonna make you do it <laughs> i thought i'd wake up when i did it oh. nope he's waking up he's out cold <laughs> the ears didn't even move i love that and People always ask me in reverse what I would do for a seal sound, and I would say they just sound like confused. They're they're the dogs of the sea, so they're always like arf, arf, arf. You know? They're totally dogs. The way they act, the way they conduct themselves. Uh, okay, last question. What is your favorite chance expression? Um. I would have to say my favorite chance expression. Ooh, this is a tough one. But I would have to say the side eye. His sassy side eye when he has a toy in his mouth. I love the way you record that. Like, he just walks in, drops the toy, and he just turns and just, like, gives you that. He's a artist. He's a master manipulator. <laughs> but Man. That, for people who don't know. He has like little eyebrows and he's got a furrowed brow too, which makes it like really pronounced when he does the side eye. So definitely the side eye. You have to follow Stevie just for the chance content. It is incredible. True. It is incredible. Aside from all the amazing nutrition advice that she gives. I mean, the chance content alone is worthy of subscribing. Yes. A hundred percent. Well, Stevie, it's been awesome having you on the show. Thank you for coming back on. This was like so much fun. And it was awesome diving into all these topics and hopefully we make the third episode even more awesome. Maybe it's a whole thing about like solopreneurship. I love it. Yeah, no, this was great. Thanks so much for having me. It was great to chat. Yeah. Have a great rest of your evening. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye.